Good afternoon, this is Charles Kelly of Money Tips. Welcome to another edition as we could be facing possible food shortages and even wartime style rationing as this war in Russia continues and, and Ukraine. We know that Ukraine and Russia supply most of the wheat to the world as well as oil and, and, and this, this war is forcing up the prices of everything from oil and gas to, to fertilizer chemicals and, and the price of wheat. It, it is causing real uh, poverty in some, some areas of the world already. And, and you know we know that we've already had problems in the last couple of years of supply chain shortages in China, shipping container prices going through the roof. And in, in addition, we, we've had this money creation from governments that have forced inflation up to highs that we've not seen for the last 30 and in America 40 years. Inflation is 7% here, the official inflation rate anyway, and over 8% in America. But we know that inflation is in reality is much higher based on the goods that you and I buy. I don't, I don't know where they get these figures from, but um, some, some commentators have said that if they measured inflation the way they did in the 1980s, inflation would now be at 17%. That, that's in, in, in America. So we, we are uh, facing a crisis. Farmers are warning of a food shortage uh, because they can see, they can see the supply chain ahead. Um, and in fact, um, you know, we, we, we even see things disappearing off the shelf. Cooking oil, for instance, you know, I, I had a look in the supermarket, I saw this empty shelf and a sign saying, um, you know, we're due to a shortage, we're limiting purchases of this to so many per, per person uh, to stop people, you know, bulk buying. Um, but that, that, that's becoming a problem. And, and it, also the price has just gone up, you know, rocketed. I, I don't even know what the price rises because they keep changing the size of packaging. You know, they, they reduce the packaging and keep the price about the same. And that you suddenly realize well, this is not a kilo, this is, you know, 0.75. And, and it's, it's even more expensive than a kilo was. And that, that's, that's on things like pasta as well. So we, we are facing a, a real crisis. And, you know, last week the UN advised that over 30, 36 countries depend on Russia for half of their wheat imports and in fact I said last week that the UN Secretary General uh, Antonio Guterres said look wheat's up 50% uh, he said oil and gas 60% natural gas 50% uh, fertilizer up 100% you know there are different takes on this and, and actually how much they've gone up by but the National Farmers Union have weighed in now that they are the union for the farmers in the in the UK and they say Ukraine is a major supplier of wheat, barley, maize, uh, oil seeds, uh, particularly sunflower oil and meal. Um, and, and the global market for, for meeting the needs is, is estimated at 400 million people depend on this worldwide. So the interruption of that supply with the closure of the Black Sea uh, is, is hitting countries in North Africa hardest, but it, it, it's having a knock on effect for everyone. And, you know, it's all very well to say, let's smash Russia, let's destroy their economy and go in all gung ho like Biden and Boris. You know, but that's we are, we are in effect shooting our own selves in the foot. And it's not them who will pay for it. It's you and I. It's the consumers. You know, it's it's the ordinary people that will pay for this in in higher costs and higher taxes to pay for all these the, the, their mistakes. And, and meanwhile, Russia can sit back. They've got massive reserves, massive uh, reserves of gold and oil. Uh, they don't have much debt like like the Western economies do, so I think he's calculated this like a chess player, uh, several moves ahead, and he knows that he can ride this out. And eventually, you know, we're going to have to uh, reverse some of these these gung ho policies. Now, other European countries and other European leaders have got a bit easier on on, on this because they know that uh, I mean Germany depends on nearly half of its uh, on Russia for nearly half of its gas and oil. So you know, how long can can that go on? So you know, I know that we're talking about uh, ending dependency on, on Russia uh, for, 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 for fuel and heating and that sort of thing. They're talking about wind power, which is, is, is not going to solve the problem. I know that the, the minister announced that the building of uh, a number of new nuclear power stations, uh, but they take several years to build. And in any case, where do we get uranium from you know that that's we don't make it here in the UK we're still going to depend on someone to import that that uranium uh, which is needed for nuclear power obviously so the, the NFU has warned us an, in an acceleration and in, in the rise of commodity prices you talk about global commodity prices. I'll put it all on the blog here uh, but you know in the last 18 months they said wheat prices have gone up nearly 110 percent that's over 18 months 
maize and vegetable oil are up 140%, maize and vegetable oil, 140%. No wonder uh, prices have gone up on, on the supermarket. Soya bean up uh, 90%, and th th this, is, this is not just because of the conflict, by the way. This has been happening for, for the last couple of years. I've been warning about this. I've been telling people to stock up on, the, on you know, non-perishable food items. Um, so it, it, it really is, is a, big, a big deal, but if the price of wheat has soared by 70% since the invasion. That's that's the National Farmers Union uh, own figures. So have a look at my blog. You, you'll see all the figures down there. But I, I believe that signs of poverty have already been seen in wealthy countries like the UK, uh, which, you know, we're seeing that, um, you know, people are more turning to food banks. Uh, people uh, on, on, on several blogs, uh, children were saying to the, the children's uh, channel of the BBC, CBBC, that uh, you know they've had to been sleeping in in extra jumpers, sleeping in jumpers to keep them warm during the the, the cold months that we've just passed by. Fortunately, uh, they've also talked about their pocket money being cut or just reduced altogether. You know, if you can't afford to give your your children a couple of pounds a week for pocket money, then something is is really seriously wrong. Now, obviously, this doesn't affect everybody, but you know, even the middle classes are you know tight in their belts. I mean, we saw that that fifty billion dollars was wiped off. The, the FANG member, the FANG share member, Netflix, you know, one of the, the big five of, of the, the stock market, 50 billion was wiped off, that their share price tumbled 35%. Following the announcement that in the first quarter of 2022, they lost, listen to this, 200,000 subscribers. And, and it could be a million by the end of the year, some analysts are forecasting. Now we know that, um, you know they're planning to launch a cheaper service with ads and that sort of thing now yeah you could say well that's down to, to competition from disney channels and other channels as well but you know when you when you've got a a, a fee that's that's less than 10 pounds a month in the uk probably 10 dollars less than 10 dollars a month in in america you know and people want to get rid of that then that's that's not a lot of money is it for the for the middle classes you can afford netflix and and smart tvs that's not a lot of money it's not like sky Sky Sports and movies, so for them to cut that out, that, that, that there must be really seriously budgeting for them to cut out, you know, a ten dollar a month uh, subscription charge to Netflix. So, you know, normally something like that would just be forgotten, even if you're not using it, you wouldn't even think about it. But you can see that people are budgeting and, and tightening their belts, and so they should, because whatever the the organizations like the Fed and the Bank of England say about inflation being transitory or temporary, don't believe that. You've got to make your own economy, your you economy, and do what you need to do to get through this. Because yes, we're not in recession, um, as some people say, we're not in recession, but you know, the underlying, uh, the underlying economy, the real economy in, in people's pockets, I believe is in recession. We're seeing lots of businesses fail and people not able to spend so much money because you know this last month, gas and electricity bills have, have gone up enormously. Um, you know, I, I had to ring up British Gas today and I said, I thought I'm on a fixed rate. They said, yes. Uh, and I said, so why has my uh, bill gone up? And he said, that's based on your consumption. But I said on the back page, it says my consumption has gone down. So he just kept repeating and repeating. In the end, I said, look, you're not answering my question. So the guy from British Gas who was an overseas call center, just hung up. Just a click, it went hung up. And then I put the phone down and then it, it rang briefly for a second. I saw it, I thought, oh, they're calling me back. And then it cut off. So he will say, well, you know, I, the, the call got cut and I tried calling back, he didn't answer. But that's, that's what they're doing, you know, this British gas and, and these call centers. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I wasn't rude to him. I just said, look, you're not answering my question. You just keep regurgitating the same script. Anyway, that's another little rant there. Don't worry about that. But even though we're not in recession, the economy, I believe, is still in the winter season and we're, we're in for tough times. So, you know, the winters don't last forever, but you've got to get through this. So as I've suggested in previous weeks, bulk buy non-perishable consumer goods um, as, a, as a hedge against inflation because the prices are going to go up. Now, you might think, well, if I go out and bulk buy, that's going to be a shortage for everyone else. But apparently that's not the case because uh, many, many people research this and they find that if stuff sells on the supermarket shelves at, at a higher rate, then they will order more. But if we wait and wait and wait and go and rush out and try and buy at the last minute when everybody knows there's going to be a shortage, then they've really run out then. There's nothing much you, they can do. 
And, and the food supply coming into the UK is, is on what's called a just-in-time delivery. So they've only got a few days ahead. They've only got a few days supply of food in, in a, at any one time. So if, if anything is, is interrupted in that supply chain, then you know we could be in trouble and we could be back to, to rationing. Now, what does rationing mean? During the, the last World War, the Second World War, uh, people in this country had ration cards and they could only buy so much of certain food items like you know meats and butter and sugar and that sort of thing and they could only buy so much per week uh, but it, it was a problem you had to queue up and uh, you know and, and, and you could only buy X amount of stuff you couldn't uh, you know even people who grew food on uh, allotments had had their, their their food seized and that sort of thing. so it was quite serious oil the petrol was rationed as well um, the funny thing is that people actually lost weight during this period and were actually healthier than, than when they just ate lots of food. But I, I'm not saying we want to get back to that. Uh, but it, it could come. And I, I really believe, I don't think we'll see rationing realistically in this country, but who knows? We, we, we didn't know what was going to happen in the last couple of years, so nothing would, would kind of surprise me. So you know, buckle down, tighten your belts, um, build your line of credit, watch your credit rating, and consider earning more cash on the side doing doing a sideline job there are still plenty of jobs out there in the uk you know i was passing by pubs today staff wanted restaurant staff wanted delivery van drivers uh, and, and many other jobs nursing care work there's plenty of jobs out there so you, you can maybe consider getting a part-time job and earning a bit more money to, to tie to get you through this to tide you over and watch my video the five inflation busting tips that i put up i'll put a link up to that make the most of your money and resources you know, learn how to get control and, and manage your money and you know think about investing think about not leaving your money in the bank where it's earning nothing but investing in uh, real assets that, that do go up in value during inflationary times now I'm not your investment advisor um, you know get help take advice if you're in debt get help as well uh, don't, don't just bury your head in the sand but you know you could take proactive steps to, to increase your wealth during recessions a lot of people do increase their wealth. They don't necessarily go down. Um, they, they, their wealth goes up, especially if you're you're wealthy and you, you own assets already. They tend to go up. It's like the saying, the old saying, "The rich what gets richer and the poor what gets poorer." You know, and, and that, that's that's always true, unfortunately. So people do get wealthier during recessions. So what can you do about it? Okay. Now to help you through this, I'm I'm putting on. A special free money masterclass next Wednesday 7 p.m. and I'd invite you to join me in this class it will be an intimate small gathering it won't be like hundreds of people um, and, and you'll be able to interact and ask questions so uh, that will be next Wednesday It'll last about an hour or so and, and I would call it the new way to build wealth immediately get control of your finances and learn how to become financially free in the next 28 days you could literally transform your life and turn it around in the next 28 days so so I'll put a link up there to register and and in this this live uh, broadcast live masterclass we're going to cover three main things how to get control of your finances immediately uh, how to uh, be financially free in 28 days and how to start accumulating wealth and remember if you can't get control of your finances then you can't do anything can you you know your life is just in in chaos so that that would be the first thing just for, for that alone this masterclass will be worth it so so please do register I'm keeping it a small group so seats will be limited so register now get your name down for it it's absolutely free there's no obligation come along join it and and see me talking live and going through this the, what you can do in much more depth than I can do on a short podcast so thanks very much for listening do register for that free masterclass next Wednesday 7 p.m. that's UK time British summer time thanks for listening and have a great day bye for now